Good evening and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Jack Ford. Julie Menon is a powerhouse in City Hall. She has been the commissioner of the mayor's office of media and entertainment, also the commissioner of the city's Department of Consumer Affairs. Now she's tackling two new jobs at once, and both are vital to the city's well-being and future. So here with some details on just what she's up to and its dire importance to the city is director Julie Menon. It's nice to have you here with us. Thanks for having me. We often talk about people wearing different hats. You, you must have a shelf full of hats <laughs> that you wear up there. Let me talk about the, the, the two new titles. You're going to be the New York City Census Director mm -hmm. and the Executive Assistant Corporation Council for Strategic Advocacy. So let's, let's sort of break them down and let's sure. talk first about the census. Um, there, we've, there's been an estimate that the city has put out that shows maybe a quarter of a million people did not get counted right. last time right. in the census. My first question for you is why is that important? Why is the number important? Why isn't it just, okay, here's how many yeah. people we have. What's the significance? It's so to important. That? We've got to remember that there's about $700 billion of federal funds at stake for cities and states all across the country. And we get a significant portion of that. About $53 billion each year goes to the state for federally funded programs that relate to the census. And the city takes a lion's share of that. So it's everything from public education, Title I funds, public housing, senior centers, Medicaid, HIV funding. This is incredibly, incredible important. And so no matter what social service program you're talking about, there really generally is a correlation with the census, and that's why it's so important. But even putting the important funding issues aside, it's also about congressional representation. It's estimated in New York State that if we have a real undercount, we may lose two congressional seats. So we're talking not only about the fundamental representation that we are really entitled to, but also about the Electoral College and what's at stake there. Do we know why? We, we suspect what the number is. We have a good estimate, apparently, about the number is, about 250,000 people. Do we know why that undercount happened? Yes, we do know why it happened in 2010. So in 2010, the Federal Census Bureau sends out door knockers if you don't respond to the census. And they estimated that these certain uh, residences were vacant when the city knew, in fact, they weren't vacant. The city contested that, but ultimately the federal government did not agree uh, with the city's estimation on that. But we're basically this time going to do things a little bit differently. Um, the mayor has announced my appointment. He's also announced we're really creating a uh, community outreach that the city's never, quite frankly, seen before. We're going to be doing outreach into faith-based communities, into civic organizations, immigrant groups, because we've got to remember what's happening here is unprecedented. For the first time in 70 years, the census is asking a question, are you a U.S. Yeah. citizen? Let, let me, I, wanted to, I wanted to talk about that. Um, what, what is, and that's being contested. It is, and the city is one of the plaintiffs now, on the lawsuit. what would you say to somebody who, who says to you, well, I understand your concern. I'm glad that you're going to take this over and make sure we get the, the, the appropriate numbers so we get the funding we need, we have the representation right. we need. But if they said to you, well, what's the big deal with having somebody check a box on a census and here's my name, here's my age, and yes, I'm a citizen, no, I'm not a citizen. Well, in this era of Trump, um, there are dire consequences because we know the kind of um, anti-immigrant stances that the Trump administration has taken. And by asking a citizenship question, we strongly believe that this is an attempt to silence our immigrant communities. We're a city... So the, the fear is what? They will say, I don't want to fill that out I don't want to so answer I'm that. Gonna, I'm not going to answer the question. You're not going to get my name. I'm not going to be a number anymore. On, Correct. On I'm not going to answer the question. Now, the fact of the matter is that when people answer the census, their information is 100 percent protected. Title 13 of the U.S. Code protects the confidentiality. Title 13 also imposes on the federal government actually uh, severe penalties, $250,000 penalties, imprisonment of up to five years for sharing information with another federal agency or with anyone else. So we really want to assure New Yorkers their information is 100 percent protected. But what we're really... So does this come back then to your outreach efforts? It because does come I back to I would, the outreach efforts. I didn't efforts. know all of that detail. It does come back to the outreach efforts. I will say on the litigation, and we got a very favorable ruling at the district court level, this case is going up to the Supreme Court, the city. We are a plaintiff in this litigation, as well as many other states and other cities. And so we're going to fight this to the mat, because we believe the question is entirely unlawful and a real attempt to silence immigrant communities. Let me talk about the other function you're involved in. I talked about the, the notion of... of uh, Executive Assistant, Corporation Counsel, 
Council for Strategic Advocacy. Yes. What does that mean, the idea of strategic advocacy? So it's basically looking at ways that we can either sue bad corporate actors who are preying on New Yorkers. That's a lot of the work I did previously as Commissioner right. of Consumer Affairs. It's also looking at ways that we can sue the Trump administration when they're taking actions that are detrimental to New Yorkers. So the past few years, I've been an adjunct professor at Columbia teaching a class on this very subject uh, called When Cities Take the Lead. So looking at when the federal government is deregulating, whether it be in consumer protection, environmental protection, or a whole host of areas, and where the, the, the main legal avenues are for the city to be able to litigate. So I'm really excited about these two new rules. It brings me back to the core work I've done as a lawyer for many years. And, and we should note, when you say in that position to sue the Trump administration, it's not as if other administrations have not been sued, right? I mean, this is not an office that's been set up just to go after the Trump administration. Oh, uh, the, the function is, and your course, I'm sure, talks about absolutely. whenever it's, any administration It's whenever is any a administration. I mean, deregulation is something that has happened in numerous administrations, and the effects it can have on cities in particular is, is really significant. So it's really looking at the way that the federal government is taking actions or failing to take actions and how that's affecting New Yorkers. And it's also looking at bad corporate actors who are preying on New Yorkers. Talk about that a little bit so, more. That certainly. So when I was commissioner, who you would be looking yeah, at and for what yeah. sort of scenario? So, for example, when I was commissioner of consumer affairs, we looked at debt collectors who were preying on New Yorkers. We brought um, a number of lawsuits against for-profit colleges that were really scamming New Yorkers with all sorts of um, terrible practices. So it's looking at these various avenues where we really feel New Yorkers are being hurt and are being preyed upon. So we're very excited about this work, and I think it can be incredible impactful. We're also going to be looking at issues around gerrymandering and voting rights because they dovetail very much with the work that we're going to be doing around the census. So that's going to be another area of focus that we're going to look at. I think there's some cases working their way up to the U.S. Supreme Court yes. about that, as yes. a matter of fact. exactly. So, well, Julie, I, I think the answer is the, the citizens of New York City are happy that you've got two more hats <laughs> for you, you to put on. Um, because these are all areas that are very important to citizens. And I, I think certainly what you're doing in terms of outreach and getting people to understand what's going on is, is essential for all of this. So uh, it's always a pleasure to talk with you. And, Thank you and so as this much. continues to roll on, maybe we'll get you back and you can Would love to come back. Absolutely. That you're making, right? Good seeing you guys. Thank you. you take care.